My name is Michelle Brenner, and I'm the Head of Education at the Norton Simon Museum. Today, I'll be speaking about the extraordinary life and career of French artist Marie-Louise Elisabeth Vigée Lebrun, whose portrait of Theresia Countess Kinsky is one of the most striking paintings in our collection. Vigée Lebrun, seen here in a self-portrait from 1782, was born in Paris in 1755. Like many women artists of the era, her initial training came from her father, Louis Viget, who was himself a successful portrait painter. Tragically, he died when she was 12. Because of her gender, Viget Lebrun did not have access to a formal training, but with her mother's support, she attended a small drawing academy and received painting lessons from her father's friends and copied paintings in museums and private collections. As a teenager, Vigée Lebrun was already earning a living as a portrait painter, although her wages were turned over to her stepfather and later to her husband, the art dealer, Jean-Baptiste Pierre Lebrun. Known for putting her female sitters at ease and imbuing them with grace and beauty, Vigée Lebrun was summoned to Versailles at the age of 23 to paint the Queen of France, Marie Antoinette. The Queen and the artist were the same age and quickly became close friends. Vigée Lebrun painted many of the Queen's most iconic portraits, including this one from 1783. That same year, she became one of only four women allowed to join the Académie Royale. She had hoped to be admitted as a history painter, considered the most respected genre, but instead the Academy accepted her without assigning her a genre. In fact, all women entering the Academy were accepted either as portrait or still-life painters, then considered the lowest genres in the hierarchy of the arts. It was her association with the Queen that led Vigée Lebrun to escape France with her daughter, leaving her husband behind at the onset of the French Revolution in 1789. The artist painted this portrait of Theresia, Countess Kinsky, in Vienna, four years after she left France. The Countess Kinsky had the misfortune of entering into an arranged marriage to a man who abandoned her to join his mistress immediately after their wedding. Vigée Lebrun was impressed by the Countess and wrote, her person was perfection and in no need of improvement. However, the porcelain quality of the Countess's skin and the extraordinary size of her eyes appear to be improvements upon nature. And although she is portrayed outside, the breeze that stirs her hair and the scarf is selective and leaves the rest of her outfit and the surrounding landscape untouched. Known for setting fashion trends with her portraits, Vigée Lebrun often painted her sitters in shawls and turbans meant to imitate the timeless drapery seen in Renaissance paintings, like Madonna and Child with St. John the Baptist of 1507 by Raphael, whom she deeply admired. Here, a bold yellow scarf wraps around the Countess's head and winds through her long, dark hair. Around her neck, she wears a necklace of red coral beads, similar to those seen in Renaissance portraits, like Davide Gerlandaio's 1487 portrait of Silvaja Sassetti. And a sheer embroidered scarf, of a type popularized by Vigée Lebrun, is draped and tied artfully around the Countess's neckline and waist framing her face and figure. While so many of the paintings of women in our galleries and throughout art history are by male artists, here we see a portrait of a woman by another woman, an artist who could empathize with her sitter's plight. When we look at Countess Kinsky in this portrait, we see a woman who is self-possessed and dignified in spite of her circumstances. She faces the onlooker with a slight smile on her lips, and there's a kind of power to her pose. Her posture is upright, her gaze is direct as she takes a step forward. Vigée Lebrun overcame enormous barriers to build a successful career in the visual arts. At the height of her success, she left France on her own with a child to support, very little money, and almost no experience traveling outside her native country. And yet, she rebuilt her career and her fortune abroad. During her 12 years in exile, she painted the nobility of Naples, 
Russia, Austria, and Prussia, and she published her memoirs before her death at the age of 87. Vigée Lebrun was able to write her own story, claiming control of her narrative and her legacy. <laughs>